Hey guys, Nintendrew here. This is the 19SV111, also known as the Sharp Game Television, a 19-inch TV with a built-in Nintendo Entertainment System. If you're a Nintendo fan like me, you might have heard of this system before, but odds are you probably don't know much about its history. Although it's been a holy grail for many collectors since its release over 30 years ago, information on its development has been shockingly sparse. In researching for this video, we fell down a rabbit hole of clues and investigation that has uncovered some really interesting details surrounding its production. So sit back, grab some popcorn, and let me tell you the story of the Sharp Game Television. First, I want to give a shout out to a few people who made this video possible. Thanks to Robert Buell for tipping me off about this TV having been traded in to a local game store, to Infinite Craftsman on Instagram for the replacement door I used while cleaning and refurbishing it, and to my fiance Kristen who took on the bulk of research for this project. I love you, babe. Thank you. So what is the Sharp Game Television? Released in late 1989, this system marks one of a long line of collaborations between Sharp and Nintendo a 19-inch screen television combo unit with a built-in Nintendo Entertainment System. On the front of the base are power and reset buttons for the built-in console, two standard NES controller ports, and two latching plastic doors. The upper door is home to four adjustment dials for brightness, color, tint, and picture, as well as two hidden service knobs accessible by a flathead screwdriver for base brightness and vertical size. And the lower door covers the NES cartridge tray. When closed, the door shows the TV's official name, the Sharp Game Television. Along the edge of the base are four flimsy plastic feet that have come to be one of the most recognizable features of the 19SV111. Finding one of these TVs with all four feet intact is a rare sight, as most of them have lost at least one foot in the decades since its production. In the case of this unit, I actually used my 3D printer to replace two broken front feet at home. Moving around to the back of the system, we can take a look at the TV's inputs. Unfortunately, with a TV set this old, those inputs are pretty limited. On the left is a coaxial connection for VHF or RF signals, and to the right are two UHF terminals. Below these terminals are a switch for toggling between different standards of cable signals, and a service dial for adjusting automatic gain control. If none of this means anything to you, don't feel too bad. Long story short, this TV doesn't have any standard composite audio-video inputs, but it can be used with other consoles and video signals by way of a generic RF modulator. So yes, it can play Crisis. Moving on to the NES portion of the system, from a hardware perspective, it's basically just your standard NES console. The power and reset buttons function the same, the cartridge mechanism is identical, and even the covered expansion port that was never used in North America is still present on the bottom of the television. The system works with all the same games and accessories as your typical NES console, and is consequently prone to all the same problems. Although they're even more difficult to find than the console itself, the game television did originally ship with two special controllers. These controllers are almost identical to the original NES gamepad, with the exceptions of being made from a black plastic instead of gray, and sporting a custom design on the front. This unique label replaces the classic Nintendo logo with a line of text simply reading, Game Television. It was also originally sold with an exclusive remote control, complete with a dedicated button for turning the integrated console on and off from the comfort of your couch. Good luck getting your hands on one of these today, though. Despite the appearance of speaker grills on both sides of the TV, one of them is a fake. This model does not support stereo audio output. By opening the set, we can observe that only one speaker on the left side is installed and connected to the main board. With the internals exposed, we can also observe that this model has an interestingly modular design. After removing the back of the unit, taking out some screws, and disconnecting a few cables, the NES portion of the TV can be completely removed and inspected on its own. If we delve further into this NES compartment, we can confirm that the internal hardware is practically identical to consumer NES units, and oddly enough doesn't take up too much room in the base. Despite rumors that this NES console is unique in supporting RGB output directly to the display, the 19SV111 does not support RGB and in fact uses the same composite picture processing unit present in every other model of the NES. The picture is no better than any other NES console. This rumor came about from discussions surrounding the My Computer TV C1, 
an earlier but distinctly separate combination TV and Famicom console developed by Sharp and Nintendo for Japanese markets and released in 1983. Although evidence is lacking, there's speculation that this earlier system may have been used by Japanese video game publications to capture high-quality screenshots for magazines in the mid-80s. Nintendo and Sharp would later go on to release the SF1 TV with built-in Super Famicom to Japanese markets. Moving back to the Sharp game television, the only other model discussed online is the 19SC111, a purportedly even rarer model sold exclusively to hotels. More on that rumor later. Outside of what we can observe from the physical hardware itself, it's actually really hard to find any concrete details about this TV. It's especially difficult to find quality sources, given that it released relatively early in Nintendo's home console history, and is literally older than I am. Sorry to any viewers I made feel old out there. Shout out to my boomer viewers, I see you in the analytics. Stay cool. Information on the Wikipedia entry for this TV is pretty unreliable, and most other info out there is conflicting and ambiguous. The only printed media that has surfaced in regards to this TV is a service manual with information on how to troubleshoot and repair common issues. In fact, the first photo of the original retail box to surface anywhere online was just uploaded to Reddit while I was recording for this video. It took over three decades since the TV was originally sold for anyone to find and photograph the packaging. On top of that, both Sharp and Nintendo claim to have no real information on this system in their company archives. Hey, do you guys know anything about the Sharp game television? Despite rumors that a TV and an NES could be bought separately for cheaper than this combo system, nobody could even provide a receipt, an advertisement, or any other concrete proof of how much this thing actually sold for. And that is specifically what sparked the deep dive that followed. When this TV launched in 1989, there were still a few years before the mainstream adoption of the internet. So Kristen had the idea to start combing through old newspaper archives. After literal days of searching, we finally came across one solitary reference to the machine. Apparently, it was initially revealed at the Summer Consumer Electronics Show of 1989 in Chicago. While Nintendo was busy introducing the world to their handheld juggernaut, the Game Boy, the Sharp Game Television was unceremoniously previewed over at Sharp's much smaller booth, and overlooked by almost every attendee. But thankfully, one reporter managed to keep a record, and wrote that it was to be sold later that year at an MSRP of $799. This matched up perfectly with previous anecdotal accounts we found from individuals who bought the TV themselves. Mystery solved! But what of its even more elusive brother, the 19SC111? This model is listed on almost every resource on the web discussing the Sharp Game Television. The SC model was supposedly a sleeker, darker, and even rarer model than its counterpart but was sold exclusively to and only used by hotels. It has been suggested that there were as few as 200 units of this TV manufactured after production ended on the 19SV111 model. Even with so few of them out in the wild, you would think that someone would have taken a clear photo of one by now, but the best we have is this blurry picture that claims to show both models side by side. In researching for this video, I reached out to a private group of Sharp NES TV owners to ask about this thing. I figured if anyone would know about the SC model, they would. Through this group, I got in contact with the person who managed a community serial number master list from the now defunct Nintendo Age forums. He recalled that someone from the forums submitted an image of their own 19SC111 television and would try to find it for us. But as it turned out, the user that submitted that photo never showed the back of the television or the printed model number, and was subsequently banned. Twice. Ultimately, it seems like that user was either mistaken, or more likely just trying to get some attention. At this point, I had more questions than answers. Namely, why would Sharp make an entirely different model after three months of supposedly terrible sales of the 19SV111? And if they didn't, where did the rumor of the SC come from? Enter the Assembler. This blog post was referenced by the Wikipedia page and countless other trusted sources with listings about the Sharp game television. And wouldn't you know it, at the top of their article on the television was the model number 19SC111. A typo, despite the image on the same article clearly showing the model number, 19SV111. After following this game of telephone through the history of the Wikipedia page, the fandom article, and countless other listings, it became clear that rumors of the 19SC111 originated from a simple typing error. Ultimately, I had to conclude that this thing was completely made up, which is insane! In retrospect, it doesn't make sense anyway. 
No hotel would have had cartridges lying out in their rooms for the taking, and even if they did, 200 televisions wouldn't even necessarily fill one hotel. Nintendo did work with a company to make Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, and GameCube game rental systems in the decades to follow, but those were totally different setups. To this day, nobody has provided evidence of an NES TV system in a major hotel. Not to mention, there are other TVs that Sharp made around that time that would have multiple similar model numbers listed together in one manual. So theoretically, if there was an SC model that was identical to the SV aside from a minor color change, the manual would have likely just listed them both. The 19SC111 rumor probably held on for so long and contributed to further confusion because the game television's predecessor, the My Computer TV C1, also had C1 in its model number. I genuinely hope I'm wrong, but as far as we can tell, the 19SC111 was a complete fabrication due to a typo. After all, C and V are right next to each other on the QWERTY keyboard. But one more mystery still bothered us. As far as anyone has been able to tell, there were absolutely no advertisements for this thing. Why? According to the table of serial numbers mentioned before, we could estimate that approximately 20,000 were produced and sold. So where are the advertisements? Despite claims that it may have been sold at Sears, others have noted that it was completely absent from the 1989 Sears holiday catalog. Some folks had first-hand accounts of buying their TV at Kmart, but still no advertisements. No tangible evidence that this thing was ever actually released. So, back to the newspapers. For days, Kristen and I continued to scour these newspaper archives looking for any trace of the Sharp Game television. Until finally, all at once, bam, 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 ads for this TV showed up in different cities across the country on April 15, 1990, a full three months after the TV was discontinued. And these ads were exclusively placed by Kmart. This is when a full picture came into view. Why are there only ads a full six months after its launch and only from Kmart. Now bear with me, there's a healthy dose of speculation here, but we've put together what we think is a pretty good explanation for how all this might have gone down. Sharp and Nintendo have had a good relationship for quite some time. It was in Nintendo's interest to keep things smooth. However, they are very protective of their brand and don't hesitate to bury uncomfortable history. <coughs> Virtual Boy, <coughs> Love Hotels, <coughs> Secret Moon Base. In the late 80s, while Nintendo was busy building a gaming empire and competing with Sega and Atari, Sharp was involved in a completely different tech war, home media. At the time, Sharp had a variety of projects they were working on, including a portable VHS player with a tiny screen, an innovative flat screen LCD TV, and other CRT combo units with VCRs built in. If we were to analyze the model number of one of these combo televisions, we could pick out a few important details. For example, here's the 20VT H60, a combination TV and VCR system. The 20 at the front of the model number indicates the television's display size in inches. The H60 indicates the specific submodel. When Sharp would make multiple TV sets using the same basic form factor, this portion would help distinguish between them. And the VT indicates the product category. In this case, it's short for VCR television. But looking back at the 19SV111, if we were to do the same sort of analysis with this new knowledge, what does SV have to do with the game television or Nintendo? Back to the newspapers. Once again, we continued to search for a shred of evidence that could put the last piece of this puzzle together. And what did we find? A sharp television with SV in the model number. In this case, a TV with S-Video input. Now, why is this significant? Well, as we saw earlier, the Sharp NES TV has only RF input. So why would it follow this S-Video name convention? Just another question! Why is Nintendo's name nowhere on the product, and why wouldn't they show it themselves at CES? Why the bulky design compared to the sleeker Famicom and Super Famicom TVs? Why the flimsy plastic feet? Why are there unused ports on the motherboard? Why is there a mystery notch in the plastic on the back with no discernible purpose? Why? Here, dear viewers, is what I believe happened. Sharp had worked closely with Nintendo for the earlier My Computer TV C1, but something was clearly different this time. Unlike the C1, which launched in the same year as the Famicom in Japan, the Sharp game television didn't release until four years after the launch of the NES in the States. Meanwhile, in the world of video entertainment, the S-Video standard was introduced with Super VHS technology in the years prior. Sharp was on the cutting edge of home entertainment. They likely made a deal with some third-party company to include an SVHS player in an upcoming TV, 
So somewhere along the way, maybe that deal fell through, but they had already started production and had a bunch of combo-ready TVs ready to go with nothing to sell them with. So maybe somebody at Sharp said, Hey Nintendo, do us a solid. You know that Famicom TV we made? Yeah, it was around for six years and didn't sell too well, but we think it'll be different this time. Why? One word. America. And Nintendo was like, Listen, we like what you've got going on, but we're just not that into you. So you can make this thing, but you will not put our name on it. Oh yes, it'll have our copyright and trademarks on the back, but otherwise generic as heck. I'm talking bury the NES behind a door with some knockoff Pac-Man font that just says game. I don't want to see Nintendo anywhere near this monstrosity. Make the controllers a completely different color and take our name off of it. You can include our seal of quality on the inside of the box. And one more thing, you could sell it wherever you want, but we don't want any internal competition. We're trying to start a worldwide phenomenon with the Game Boy over here. Whoever sells this thing, you've got to get them to agree to a six month gag order. No advertising for six months. No print, no radio, TV, nothing. Capiche? And Sharp was like, deal. So Nintendo shipped them a measly 20,000 NES units off the production line that they'd never miss, Sharp gutted them and delicately spread its components across the chasm that was the bottom cabinet of this television. As a result of its new top-heavy reality, Sharp said, what the heck, let's toss some weird plastic feet on the ends of it so it doesn't fall on any kids. We already lost our SVHS deal, the last thing we need is a lawsuit. And thus, the Sharp game television was born. But who could Sharp approach to sell it? They likely approached Sears as they were the number one retailer at the time, but were turned down. And why wouldn't they be? If Nintendo wanted this thing buried, Sears wouldn't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. But Kmart was coming in hot and gunning for that number one spot in retail. Suddenly, they're offered an exclusive system with a Nintendo built in that Sears wouldn't have? Yeah, the NDA is weird, but whatever, let's do it. Although an exact release date is not yet known, it is clear based on manufacturing dates that it was sold no sooner than October of 1989. And what happens exactly six months later? Kmart can finally break the silence and can't push these things away fast enough. Ads appear in every city on the same date, listing the 19 SV111 for almost half off from its original suggested retail price. This is further backed up by the recent resurfacing of the television's retail box. This specific unit was sold at Kmart for $477 in September of 1990. If this is the case, it makes so much sense. Every first-hand account of purchasing one of these things has been from Kmart. The only ads that have surfaced are from Kmart, conspicuously delayed until six months after launch. The design of the earlier and later TV combo models released in Japan, the C1 TV and the SF1 TV, were much more streamlined. And the SV in the model number? Just another vestigial hint of its past. And that, my friends, is the story of the Sharp Game Television. But don't nod off just yet. This story is just beginning. There are still so many unanswered questions about this part of Nintendo's history, and not even Nintendo themselves have any details about it. Or at least that's what they want you to think. So if you or anyone you know has any more information on this rare and elusive piece of gaming history, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. If any new major developments are discovered, I'll make a follow-up video to make sure the information is as up-to-date and accurate as possible. As always, thank you so much for watching, and happy game hunting! Hey, where's that Switch Pro everybody's talking about? Localized Mother 3! Is Doug Bowser related to THE Bowser? What's Reggie up to these days? Hey, do you do you guys need any help in there? I know stuff about video games.